Hello and thank you for joining us today. We will be doing this uh, painting of the Queen of Hearts. And first we're going to go over what supplies you'll need. So we did this on an 11 by 14 canvas here that is in the portrait position, which means that it's not sideways. You'll need a napkin. And then also a palette, one with 12 works best. A wide flat brush for your background. A medium sized brush, pretty much of any size works or of any shape works. And a pointed detail brush. You'll also want to make sure that you have a cup of water. It's just not pictured here. So first thing we're going to start with is a dark blue. This can be a navy. All of the colors, all of the paint that you'll need is listed in the description of this video also so you can get that ready ahead of time. And you'll need to do at least two layers of this paint, especially if you're using a cheaper brand like I am here. So go ahead and pour you out a bunch of that paint. And we're using the wide flat brush for the background here. And whenever I do my backgrounds, I go in one direction first, let that dry, and then once it's dry, do the second layer in the opposite direction. The more layers you do with this method, the more consistent and the more matte the color will end up. As you're spreading this paint, anywhere that you see the paint is built up will look darker and those areas will dry slower versus the areas that look lighter that is where the paint is thinner and will dry faster. Try your best to smooth out any areas that look shiny, any grooves that pop out more than others, to try and get a cohesive layer that will dry generally around the same time. And you'll see that I'm kind of applying the paint to the canvas and then spreading it out for, mo for many of these backgrounds. This is just our first layer of the blue, so you don't have to really worry about it looking really pristine and perfect immediately. This first layer can look kind of choppy. I've found that with cheaper acrylics especially, something you can do to help it dry faster is to use the friction of your brush just to wipe off any excess paint. And here you can see the difference of what that layer looks like dry. And now I'm just taking more of that same color paint with my second layer and going in the opposite direction. And you can already see a difference in how that color is just so much bolder. It's a much richer color than if we had just done one layer. It takes a little bit of extra time, but I always find that it's worth it in the end to go ahead and just do at least two or three layers of these cheaper acrylics. Now if you're using a heavier body acrylic like Liquitex, um, or golden has some heavier bodies, then a lot of times you'll really only need one layer. The best way to tell if these layers are getting completely dry 
is to just visually look at it and see if there are little areas that are shiny where the paint was thicker. And if the paint looks completely matte, then it's dry enough for you to do more layers. If it still looks shiny, then you should probably wait until it dries a little bit more. And again, that's a suggestion I make with the cheaper acrylics because a lot of the heavier body acrylics, they stay glossy and they're harder to tell if it's dry. Sometimes you have to do kind of a tap test and touch it with your fingers a little bit and feel if it's still sticky. But with these cheaper acrylics, it's pretty easier to tell. And again, there I'm just smoothing everything out. There's no paint left in my brush at this point. I'm just using my brush to spread the paint that's there around a little bit more and make it a little bit thinner so that it dries quicker. And we're about to introduce another color to start our outline here. Actually, no, we're gonna add some silver. So add your silver. And how we're gonna do this, I use the same brush I didn't wash it out any and you're just going to kind of make streaks and these are vertical streaks meaning that they're going up and down they're going in the direction of the canvas and you can't quite see it here but what I'm doing is I have a very wide brush here so I'm only dipping part of it in the silver paint. And I'll deposit the color onto the blue and then just kind of spread it out a little bit more with the entire width of the brush. So I deposit with a small part of the brush and then I spread it out with the entire width of the brush. It's also worth noting here that I actually didn't let that final layer of blue completely dry because I wanted it to kind of blend in with the silver that I'm adding. So maybe just give it, you know, about half the time to dry that you would if you were adding another layer. Remember acrylics are very dry so they can be hard to work with sometimes. You have to kind of get used to when to let the layers dry fully versus when to work with it a little bit wet or midway through the drying process, depending on what effect you're going for. And there I am again, just taking the entire width of the brush with no paint left in it and swiping all the way down to blend everything together. And here I'm just showing how I like to clean out my brushes when there's still a lot of paint left in them. So here I'm dabbing the brush as much as possible out on something dry this can be an apron if you have one or a paper towel or a regular towel and then i put it in the water and wash it out and i'll do that a couple times until no more color is coming out of the brush that was actually a little piece of heavy body acrylic that was dried onto the bristles so this process actually helps to get that dry paint out too. I found that a lot of blue colors stain a lot. They, they will stain your brushes a lot. So this painting has a lot of drawing, we're drawing a face, and 
the first thing that we're going to do is use either your medium sized brush or your smallest detail brush, whichever one is personally easier for you to draw with. It's really a matter of preference. And we're going to make markers with the black paint so that we can designate where our features are going to be. And then we're going to connect those markers. So the first one that we're going to make is for the chin. And here I'm using my brush to kind of measure out where these features are going to be. And it's a little hard to see there because of the shadow, but I'm drawing just kind of a little line there to show me where I want my chin to be. And here, there I am showing you my hand to kind of give reference to how much of the canvas it takes up from the bottom. So almost my entire, the entire width of my hand up from the bottom of the canvas is going to be the chin. And that's actually, that wound up being a little bit high for this painting. So if it's lower, then it's okay. And there I am measuring again. And you're going to draw a line, a V-type shape. And that's going to be our Queen's Widow's Peak. And now I'm just going to connect them in a heart shape. You don't have to draw each side of the heart in one long swoop. You can do segmented strokes like you're about to see me do here. And at this point during this process of making this video, I have actually drawn this face three times. And I always kind of make a joke that I can never draw the same face twice. So I've drawn three Queen of Hearts faces for this project and none of them look exactly like the original. And no one else's who's, who I've taught to do this painting has looked like mine. But that's not exactly the point of doing these paintings. It's not to teach people how to draw like me or how to paint like me, it's so that you learn the skills to draw your own pictures. And now we have sort of a heart shape, but it's actually more along the lines of a face shape. And this isn't a realistic face, this is, this is more of a caricature. So we're allowed to break some rules here. There I am drawing the lines for the neck on either side of the chin. That's going to show me where my neck is. And then I'm ending it down there in a V that's going to show me where my collar is. And I'm going to go ahead and just roughly draw that collar in. And this is where I kind of realized that I put the face a little bit higher up. So later on you'll see me give her some shoulders to sort of balance that out. If you found that you've done the same thing, then adding shoulders is, is pretty easy. It's a pretty easy fix to help it look a bit more in proportion so her neck doesn't look so long. So from the middle of that V, I'm making a line up and then I'm sort of mirroring that part shape for her hair. And again, don't worry about trying to make it in one big long stroke. You can do segmented strokes and then just connect them. And you want this heart where her hair is to end about where her neck begins. You'll see it connect down here. And you may not get this right the first time. It may not be perfect the first time and you'll have to go back and fix it, which I absolutely did. 
and all three times that I've done this painting I wound up changing features of the face and the hair crown and so on so don't worry if you have to go back and fix things and add stuff or remove stuff Something else I'm going to note here is that I do the hair first and then I add in the ears so that way it's just kind of easier to, dis to decide where the ears should go. I'm going to go ahead and outline the crown. Which is two lines up top. And then that crown is just built out of triangles. Taking it down, down, and then there's going to be another triangle going up in the middle. And then coming down to connect, and then there are two that you can see in the background that are also still connected to the crown. So two more triangles. So this is a lot more drawing than we do in, all, in some of our other classes. So here I actually made a mistake. I started with the wrong color beige. What you'll want to start with is actually your more peach color, which I'll correct it here in a minute. But I started with the highlight color. So I had to let that dry and then put the peach back on top of it. So just skip what I'm doing right now. That color that's being used there is eggshell, but that doesn't actually go on until later. And this is where I realized my mistake. I had to go back with the peach color. There's the peach color. That goes on first. We're working from dark to light. That goes on first, your peach. And then that eggshell color goes on top. And this is your base layer. You're gonna put more paint on top of it. So just get the color on there first. The more you try to make it flat and matte at this point, the worse it's gonna be. So just get the first coat on there, let it dry, and then fix everything with your second coat. That's one big thing that I've learned with acrylics is that if you just give it some time to dry, you can usually fix any mistake. But if you try to work with it too much before it's dry, then you're just gonna end up peeling up paint and it's gonna get cruddy and, and, and gross. And 
and I'm using a medium sized brush for this too. You can use, again, this is, I think, I think a flatter brush works better, but if, if you're more used to round brushes and that's just your preference, then use whatever works because again, at this point, we're just filling in the color. We're just filling in the space. And this peach color is also going to be the base for your neck, too. Once that peach color dries, now you are going to put on the eggshell. So do the peach first, and then the eggshell. Your darker color first, and then your highlight. And there are one of two ways that you can do this. You can apply this highlight literally the same way you would apply a, a highlight to your face if you were doing makeup. Or you can just start from the center of the face and work your way out. It's going to end up having the same effect no matter which method you take. And you can't quite see because my palette is outside of the camera's view, but I do go back and forth between the peach color and the eggshell color occasionally in areas where I think that it does need to have more of the peach there, like around the corners of the face. And this is where you can cover up a lot of the imperfections that might have been made in the first coat with the peach. The brand that I'm using here is just a cheap brand uh, that comes in the little bottles. They're called Apple Barrel. And again, in the um, description of this video, we'll have all of the materials listed, including the individual colors that you'll need. But keep in mind that from brand to brand, the colors may differ. For instance, peach, or what is called peach in the brand of Apple Barrel paints, may differ from what is called peach from the brand Folk Art. So whenever you go to get your supplies, you just have to use your own discretion in deciding which one you think matches better. But most of them should be, sh should be at least similar enough to get the effects we're doing for these. So the main technique we're using here is that the lighter color or the highlight is central to the face and I'm kind of blending it out. I'm dry brushing it so I'm just 
around the corners of the face where the darker color is, I'm just letting my brush run out of paint. But this is definitely a moment where you want to make sure your peach color dried completely before you put the eggshell color on. And up here on the forehead, as I worked, I kept on peeling up bits of uh, dried paint or semi-dried paint that was revealing blue underneath where the paint hadn't dried all the way and I kept having to go back and fix it. But in the long run, I mean, again, as long as you let it dry and just put another layer on top of it, and don't try to work it too much. You don't really notice blemishes like that at the end. And here I've added my first layer of peach to the neck. And I'm doing another second layer here. And since the neck is in shadow, we're not going to put the eggshell color on the neck. We're actually going to add a little bit of a brown shadow later. But for now, we're just doing a second layer of peach. Now here we're adding that brown. We're going to draw in our features with brown first, not black. In the hair, we're adding brown for our first coat. We're using a total of three colors in the hair. First brown, and then we're going to draw the sections of hair with black and then fill in those sections with red. Using multiple colors like this will give the hair more dimension. Again, with acrylics that tend to be thin and dull whenever they dry, you really want to work in layers. And if you use more colors within those layers, then you'll get more dimension. For instance, if there was a spot at the end of this painting that didn't get filled in with red, there would be a little bit of brown peeking through, but brown is a natural hair color, so it would just look more dimensional and more detailed to have a little bit of basis of, of brown there.
The red also lays on top of the brown much easier than it lays on top of black. That's why we're not starting from a base of black. And I'm just using my medium sized brush to fill in the shape of the hair with brown. It looks a little odd right now in the video because it's such a thin layer of brown and it's still wet so it's shiny. And during this process, you can also reshape the hair if you need to. You can see where I did that over here on the left side. I found that one side of it was a little bit too wide. So I just sort of shaved it down. Here I'm taking a bit of black with a detail brush and shaping the face around the hair just so that it, just so that it's a bit more symmetric. So you may not have to do this with yours, but with my faces I almost always have to. But try not to get too carried away with adding these, you know, little details and trying to make it perfect because you can really easily take it too far and accidentally mess it up the, more, the, the harder you try to fix something and make it perfect. Keep in mind that with paintings like this that you know have a, a lot of detail, in the long run you're not going to notice the little mistakes. Here I'm doing I'm doing a little bit more brown. Not quite like an entire second coat of brown, just sort of spot coverage here and there. Now that that brown has dried a bit, we're going to go back in with our detail brush with black paint and start making the sections of the hair. So I first started from the widow's peak and worked my way out and down. 
beginning with this heart-like shape in the very center of her forehead. And I really just sort of played with shapes here. Uh, whenever we did this um, in the in-person class, everyone's hair turned out different, but they all looked really cool. So I encourage you guys to take this opportunity to sort of experiment. The main thing to know whenever you're doing hair is that it is coming from the scalp. So try to do all of your strokes coming from um, either a, a hairline. So uh, the Queen of Hearts, her her hair is, is parted down the center. So most of the hair is going to be coming from the center on either side and wrapping around. And we're drawing these sections in black, which we're then going to color in with streaks of red. And when the, and, and when the red first dries on the brown paint, it's not very vibrant. So we'll do a couple layers of red. And again, that just helps to create dimension. I'm also outlining the hair in black too. And you don't have to make the design of the hair symmetric. It doesn't have to be the same on both sides. You can make the lines going in different directions if you want to. And again, I'm not really leaving room for ears right now. I'm going to do the hair first and then add ears later. I would rather put the ears on top of the hair than have to color in all the hair around the ears. But again, that's just my preference. So if, if you're someone who you know, draws faces and heads regularly and you have a way that you like to do this that's different than my way, then just go ahead and do it. Do what works best for you. And there I'm going in with the red. And I'm going to just begin filling in those sections I've just drawn 
with the red. Now, the black that I just did at this point is mostly dry, but it may still be wet in some places. But I'm not too worried about that because this first layer is going to be dark anyway.
Now here is where I'm going through and adding some brighter red highlights in areas that are beginning to dry. Keep in mind that with acrylics, where you layer more paint will be where the most vibrant color is. Also occasionally I'm going through and adding black in areas where there needs to be more definition or more contrast. Now I'm going in with my detail brush to start drawing the features, beginning with the nose. I'm using brown, the same brown as for the hair. And I'm going to start with a thin line that's curved going downward for the bridge of the nose. That will then end in a round shape for the tip of the nose. And then on either side of that tip, we are going to draw nostrils. So on one side, a very small nostril for perspective, and then on the other side, one that looks bigger. We are going to use this brush and this color brown to outline all of the features of the face. Anything that didn't turn out how you wanted it to during this point, you can go back and touch up with your leftover peach and eggshell colors. Now I'm going to go in and begin the mouth. And she is frowning. So the line for the mouth is going to be upturned. The corners are facing downward.
For the upper lip, I'm taking the eggshell color and mixing it with a bit of brown to create a darker eggshell color. That will be the upper lip. And go ahead and fill that in with the same color that you just made. And then for the bottom lip, it's going to be the peach color. So the more orange color that we did on the face. And there that color is. We're using the peach color for the bottom lip. I'm taking that brown and just defining the corners of the mouth a little bit more. Actually that is black that I'm using but you can use brown if you want. Now next, I am going to draw the eyes, but unfortunately it got cut out during editing. But here are the rest of the details of the face. For the eyes, just aim to make sort of lemon shapes. And make sure to draw an eyelid for the eyeshadow. For the eyeshadow, we used a brighter color of blue bordering more on a turquoise and then highlighted with white. And when drawing eyebrows, just make sure that the top of the eyebrows are higher than the outer point of the eyebrows to show the expression of concern. But at this point, I'm drawing more red lines for highlights in the hair because now those first layers of red and brown have dried. So I'm just adding more detail to them.
This will be the final layer of detail that I add to the hair. But you can start to see all the different layers of texture and color that I have going on. You can really see how all of those layers on top of each other added to the entire look of the hair. I'm going in now with a gray color, or you can just use white to color in the collar. And then I'm also going to use that to make the shoulders here in a moment too. If you're neck wound up too long like mine then you can just add shoulders there at the bottom it's not very difficult Adding detail to the collar with my detail brush in black. Using that black to outline the neck as well. Just sharpen up a few details. I'm making a total mess of my water, but it's okay.
And there I am adding the shoulders. See, it's really, really simple. I'm just adding the shapes in there from the, from the collar, giving the appearance of shoulders. Just so that it looks a bit more proportionate. Using that same gray or white color. And any mistakes that you may have made, you can go right back in with the blue paint. And just sharpen it up or clean it up. taking some blue and covering up a black line that was drawn earlier that I've now decided to omit. Now I believe we're going to finally color in our crown with gold. Yeah, there the gold is. And I'm using my medium sized brush for this and a heavy body gold acrylic. The brand that I'm using in this video is called Master's Touch. You get it at Hobby Lobby. But I also highly recommend the brand Liquitex. I'm about to do a compare and create video that will compare different paint brands of gold. It will hopefully be available for viewing. And this gold paint here is very, it's very thick and very reflective. Most times you'll probably only need one coat of it, but in this here, since it's a dark background, we'll use two. Or at least two layers on the front of the crown. The three, the three spiky parts in front will do two layers. And then the two spiky parts in the back will actually only do one so that they look a bit darker and more shadowed since they're in the background.
still haven't drawn the ears because I'm being lazy, but I will get there. Here I'm outlining the crown so that it stands out a bit from the hair and touching up some rough areas on this right side of the crown here. I designed the crown, the crown so that it looked a bit more like a jester's crown rather than a regal crown. Okay, here we go. Now I'm drawing ears. So the ears, you just wanna make sure that they come out about from where the cheek or jawbone is. And I'm just drawing the bottom of the ears here and letting most of the ear be covered by hair. I'm also doing eyelashes at this point too. And I'm sorry that the eyes got cut out. Somehow my phone got switched to photo instead of video during that process. But again, if you just do remotely like a lemon shape, then you should be fine. And the pupils of the eyes, there are no iris with this painting. Again, it's very abstract. It's very much more like a caricature than anything realistic. The eyes are just black circles. They're just pupils. There's no iris. And then I took inspiration from what's called a Kubrick stare, which is popularized by characters in Stanley Kubrick films. which is just something in the eyes that makes them look kind of mad. If you wanted to look up Kubrick stare for a reference for this, that might help you do the eyes. And there I'm just doing the, um, the shadow of the chin. So that's that brown that we've been using and we're going to do two layers of that in sort of a triangular shape underneath the chin. Going in here with some black to outline the details of the crown some more. So at this point while I'm doing details, I'm going back and forth between different elements of the painting as the drying process progresses. So while I'm waiting on one thing to dry, I'll move on to something else that is already dry and add detail. Looks like I'm also adding a second coat of the gold here.
Now that my out outline for the ears has dried, I can go in and start trying to add color. So I'm first adding brown and then highlighting with the eggshell color. Going back in with the eggshell color for another layer to highlight the ears. And from here you're really just working on details that will change from person to person, painting to painting. Again, just make sure anything that you edit or decide to cover up is completely dry before you put another layer of the acrylic paint on it or else you'll just end up mixing those layers together and end up with a mess. Or you could peel up a non-dry layer and end up with dried paint mixed in and gets chunky dried acrylic paint on there and it makes the surface really uneven so when in doubt let it dry and paint over it now I'm going in with black and the detail brush to do the jewels on the crown you can do them however you want. How I did mine was outlining in black and then filling in with the same red as the hair and the lips. By the way, the lips were just done with the top of a heart and then more of a circular shape on the bottom. Once you outline those jewels, you're going to let them dry completely before adding the red or else it'll just make black. It'll mix together. And there I go to fill in the jewels with the red. And then when that red is dry, we'll add highlights with white.
Here I'm adding some thin white highlights to parts of the hair just to ev give even more dimension. And then I will add pink on the cheeks for blush in a similar manner to how I did the highlights of the face. Adding a final outline with black to the outside for detail and dimension. I'm adding in the pink with my medium sized brush. Make sure your brush is nice and dry. Again, off camera here, I'm using a paper towel to dry my brush off between each uh, wash. And I've just put a little bit of paint on there and I'm kind of patting it in there. And this paint will dry much lighter than what it initially goes on with. If you think that the color is too strong at first, when you first put the pink on, then you can go back over it with your eggshell color. Which is what I did here. And this is pretty much the final step of what we're going to do with this painting. But as always, we encourage you to add your own details, put your own spin on things. But thank you everyone so much for watching this. 
You're welcome to drop any questions in the comments. We always encourage everyone to follow our, our other social media on Facebook, Instagram, um, to see our latest events. We also want to encourage you to like and subscribe this video and check out some of our other ones as well. And again, thank you so much for watching. Here's our finished painting.